good, Brody? Is that good? Hey, homesteaders, gardeners, and cooks. My name is Jennifer. Welcome to Miles Away Farm, and welcome back to my kitchen. Today, we are making pho, often called pho by those who are not in the know pronunciation-wise. Uh, and this is a Vietnamese stoop that is made with beef bones. You can do all kinds of other pho. There is chicken pho. There's probably a vegetarian pho out there. But traditionally, it is made with beef. And if you are in a community that has a good-sized Vietnamese population, so say Seattle or San Francisco, Bay Area in general, Portland, this particular soup has a bit of a cult following. So it is the chicken soup, essentially, of Vietnam. It is absolutely delicious. And it's one of those things that, you know, people have raging debates online about who has the best pho in town. And in large Vietnamese populations, there's lots and lots of different pho places that you can go and get a big steaming bowl of pho. They're usually absolutely huge. It's probably easily a half a gallon of liquid and a ton of rice noodles and then this incredible very fragrant delicious beef broth and then lots of toppings and so one of the things that makes it fun is they bring you a plate and on that plate is usually some fresh Thai basil some limes that you can squeeze over it maybe some a hot sliced jalapenos and then all kinds of condiments as well. So hoisin sauce, soy sauce, fish sauce, chili sauce, um, lots of different ways that you can go. And it's one of those things that is quite intimidating for a home cook, especially if you didn't grow up with Vietnamese food. Uh, and I've made it a couple of different times over the years. And what I finally have come to realize is this is just bone broth. It's really bone broth with Asian spices and kind of like dishes like curry. It is made differently in every family. And so there's some traditional things that typically go into it, one of which is ginger and the other is onion, both of which are usually sliced and charred like under a broiler or over a gas flame before it goes into the soup. And then lots of beef bones, and then usually some kind of aromatic, what would we would consider typically in the US baking spices. So star anise or cloves, whole cloves, or a little bit of cinnamon, sometimes all of those, sometimes just some of those. But you read recipes and you start comparing ingredients and you realize, oh, this just depends on the person and how they grew up liking it. So you can play around with the flavorings in it and not be so intimidated by the idea that you're somehow gonna get it wrong because you didn't add something or you added too much of something else. Fish sauce is the other common component in it, Vietnamese food is typically kind of sweet and salty and spicy. Uh, and the fish sauce is usually giving you that salty and also a big umami flavor. Don't be intimidated by this. It's not gonna make it taste fishy. It's just gonna make it taste delicious. Um, Red Boat brand is a good brand of fish sauce. Three Crabs is another common good brand of fish sauce. If you're in a small town in a rural place, you might not have any choice if the Asian section of your grocery store, it likely just has one kind of fish sauce. Buy that, it's okay. But if you're ever in a big city with a big Asian grocery store, it's so fun to go in because it's like taking a trip to another land without ever leaving the country. And they will have an entire row of different kinds of fish sauces and that's super fun. But what we're gonna do is, first, we're gonna take lots of beef bones. I bought a quarter of a beef a little over a year ago, year and a half ago. And so I've got beef soup bones here. I've got just big beef bones. These are mostly marrow and not a whole lot of meat on them. So I've got a couple of stacks of those. And then I was just rooting around in my freezer looking for other things. I also have beef rib steaks. I've never eaten these. I don't really know what you typically do with them, but I thought it would be a really nice addition to this broth. Typical recipes for this are very heavy in terms of the beef. So it's usually several pounds of bones and then several additional pounds of some kind of chuck roast or some kind of beef meat. So that's what makes that broth so good is that it has a lot of beef in it. So we're, that's what we're gonna do. I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna handle these beef rib steaks. I'm gonna look that up a little bit. I might slice the meat off and put it in at the end. Typically when you get pho with beef, there's different ways you can order it. Tripe is often in it if you order it with some tripe. Sometimes you can get it with meatballs. Um, sometimes you can get it with everything. But the other thing that you'll see is very thinly sliced beef that's added to the hot broth right as it's served. 
so that that thinly sliced beef is just barely cooked and that is delicious. And so that may be what I end up doing with some of this rib meat, I'm not sure yet. I'm still figuring it out. You will usually boil the bones in a big pot of water briefly, so just a minute or two, just enough to kind of cause that foam and protein scum to come to the surface. And then we're gonna dump all of that out. It's called rinsing the bones. So we're gonna get rid of that and then we're gonna start with a fresh pot of water and do a very long simmer, so essentially making stock. And then we'll go from there. But yeah, Vietnamese pho, really delicious. Uh, you can freeze the broth, it freezes beautifully. I imagine you could probably also just can the broth and then have it. Um, I haven't actually done that, but I might do that with this recipe because it's gonna make a lot and it's delicious, but you also end up eating it for about a week straight. So we're gonna do that tonight. The one caveat is this is a beautiful winter recipe. Traditionally, it's served with Thai basil and you really can't get Thai basil in the wintertime fresh unless you just buy it from a grocery store. It came from some hoop house somewhere, probably in California or Arizona. Um, so it is the one thing that I always miss when I make this because I grow Thai basil. Basil is a warm season plant. Thai basil is no exception. And so it is ripe in July and August, not in February. I do have some dried Thai basil, not the same, but I'll probably throw some of that in. And I may decide to cave and go to the grocery store and see if I can find fresh Thai basil in one of those little blister packs. Be fa, it's gonna be delicious. Let's get started. You can see how much meat is on these versus the bone on these soup bones. Really lovely. Versus this, which is, um, this is probably up higher on the, the hip and like much bigger, big giant bone in the middle, not a whole lot of beef on the side. So we're gonna get lots of marrow from these bones and lots of actual beef from these bones. And recipes will often ha suggest having two pots of water and just picking up and transferring the bones from one pot to the other. But don't feel like digging out two giant pots. So I'm just gonna fish these out into a bowl once they've been cleaned. And then I will just start a new pot of water in this same pot. This is a really cheap, thin metal pot. I would not normally cook in this, except for something that was mostly water because um, it has a very thin bottom and it will burn if I were to try to do this with something that was thicker. But my Dutch ovens are not quite big enough for this recipe. And this meat was still partially frozen. So it's gonna take a minute to bring this back up to a boil. So these have been cooking for three or four minutes and I have flipped over the onions. You can see they've got a nice black char on them and that is what I'm looking for. That is not burned. And then on the ginger, it's a little trickier. They're a lot drier, but I'm starting to get some good char on there as well. And that char is going to be flavor. And then I have measured out my spices and they are toasting in my toaster oven. This is my favorite way of toasting spices. You'll see recipes all the time that call for you to do it in a skillet. I find that fiddly and I like to be able to do other things. And so I will often just use a toaster oven instead. I think these are probably close to done here. And this is two whole yellow onions. And I've got this cool 
press. It's a grill press. I picked it up at an estate sale. It was rusted. I think I got it for free and I reconditioned it. It's cast iron. So I'm just gonna put those on there as a weight. I rarely use this, I love it. I think it's just beautiful and I love how it came out. But um, yeah, I don't get to use it very often so I'm kind of excited to use this as a press. So we'll give this a minute or two more. And then our water has not quite come back up to a boil yet. And then once this is at a vigorous boil, we're gonna boil it for about five minutes. And you can see some of the protein foam that's happening there. And that's what we're trying to get rid of. Um, the whole part of the goal of this is to create a more clear broth. I'm not fussy about my broth. I don't really care if it's clear or not, but it is traditional. Uh, and so I figure why not? All right, I'm gonna call this done. Turn my heat off here. You can see I've got some nice charring on this ginger. Beautiful. And then I could hear my spices starting to pop. The uh, peppercorns were starting to block, pop. You can see the color on that um, clove. And so I think these are done. We are at a full rolling boil. I'm gonna give that five minutes and then we'll pull the bones. So it's been five minutes. Let's see what we can do here to get these out of here. And I will probably just throw this in a plastic bowl out on the back porch because the dogs will drink it for sure. So I don't need to just put that down the drain. I really should have gotten a bigger bowl out, but we're gonna make it work. A little game of Jenga. All right, so that is all of our bones. We'll give our pot a good rinse and start building our soup. Our pot is clean. I'm gonna, this is only, it calls for six quarts of water, which is a gallon and a half. Um, I'm using my reverse osmosis filter for this water. Um, we're on well and we have a really high mineral content, so I want some nice filtered water in here. A gallon is about what it can do at any one time, so I've kind of maxed it out. I'm gonna add the rest of the water here in a half an hour or so. But our meat is ready to go back in. I did break down those rib steaks and this is chunks of mostly fat and gristle that I'm just gonna feed to the dogs and make them very, very happy. I did pull off, these are bones from those rib steaks. I am gonna put the bones in here as a nice bit of marrow for the broth. And then this can all just go back in. Those, these big plate bones in here first because they're gonna displace a lot of water you can see already so this is the marrow and you can see how soft that is that is lots of great flavor so good marrow bones in there and you can see we could definitely use another couple quarts of water but close enough for now to this I'm gonna add a quarter cup of fish sauce so I'm gonna finish off this three crabs brand that I've had for quite some time this is an eighth of a cup, so I'll need two of these. And then starting on the red boot. Curious if there's a sell-by date on this. I've had this a very long time. And if there is, I don't see it. Not sure this stuff ever goes bad. So the recipe calls for three ounces of rock sugar or three tablespoons of sugar. Um, it does typically have some molasses in it, so I'm gonna use raw sugar in lieu of the rock sugar. So I want that little bit of caramel flavor in there. And pho does have a little bit of sweetness to it. That's not atypical. And then the ginger and onions are gonna go in. Basically, we're making a big batch of beef broth. Nothing new here, just different flavors. And if you guys have ever grilled onions, you know that they take on a really sweet flavor when they are grilled. And my suspicion is that's what we're trying to do with the charring, is bring out a little bit of the caramelization in those nice onions there. 
All right, I will add a couple more quarts of water to this in a few minutes, but we're gonna bring this up to a boil and simmer it for at least an hour. Um, and then we're gonna pick some meat off some bones and simmer it longer than that. Got the other two quarts of liquid in here. And you will note that I have not added the spices yet. This is a long cook. And if I were to add those baking spices really early in the game, this broth would probably be over flavored. So they get added later, not now. So this has been simmering for an hour. And what I'm looking for here are the beef bones that have a lot of meat on them. I'm gonna try to get some of that meat off. Basically, if we were to cook these with the meat on the bone for the length of time we're gonna cook it, the meat would just be completely flavorless by the time we finished. It would have released all of its flavor into the broth. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing, but we wanna reserve some of that meat for our actual finished soup. Look at the color of this though, you guys, it's beautiful. You know what, I'm just gonna fish this out temporarily just because it's hard to work around. And all of this onion and ginger is just gonna be composted in the end. That's all just gonna get filtered out. So nothing to worry about there. Got all the big chunks in there. Put these back in, that back in, these two back in. And I imagine there's a way to do this in an instant pot that would probably be pretty effective, but I don't know, I'm home today. I kind of like having something slow simmering on the back of the stove. It's sort of lovely. Let's see if I can get this middle bone out of here quickly. Everything's pretty hot. Oops. Definitely want those marrow bones in the mix. All right, we'll let that cool off and I'll pick that, reserve the meat and throw the bones back in here for a longer cooking time. We're gonna go another hour on this. All right, here's our picked beef that we will throw back in at the end, but we don't wanna to cook to death. This has now been cooking for two hours. Excuse the noise, I got my teapot going over there. And the instructions that I have in one of the recipes calls for putting the spices in a spice bag, but I know I'm just gonna filter all of this anyway, so I'm just gonna throw them into the pot. So I'm gonna give this another half an hour. of simmering time. And then we will filter and have our broth ready for the regular soup. So total cooking time, about two and a half hours. Nope, go lay down. You just got all kinds of treats, go lay down. I'm just gonna let that drip for five minutes or so and then I'll come back. It's 
So here is our beautiful pho broth the next day. And you can see how jellied that is. That's a good indication that we got a lot of the connective tissue off of those bones. And all of the beef uh, fat has congealed at the top. And so I'm just gonna fish that out and then we'll be ready to start making our soup. It's a good looking stock. All right, you guys, it is a couple of days later. We had a couple of events that required us to eat out. And so it's now Sunday night, but I thought it'd be a great night to have some pho for dinner. You can see how thick and jelly-like this is. That is a really good indication that we managed to extract a lot of that connective tissue and collagen from our bones, which is great. I kept half of this for myself, and I have a friend who's having some issues where she's having a hard time cooking right now, and so dropped off the other half of this beautiful broth at her house. So hopefully she'll get a couple of nice meals out of this. So I'm just gonna start heating this up to a boil, and I'm also going to get our rice noodles prepped. All right, we are gonna soak some rice noodles for this. And you can use whatever kind of noodles you want. Traditional would be some kind of rice noodle. When they're thin, like these are, this is called a vermicelli rice noodle, but you can also get the whiter ones that are typically more typical of pad thai. Um, or you can just use whatever kind of noodles you've got. You could use ramen noodles, you could use you know, spaghetti. Um, the, I promise you the pho police are not gonna come to your house and yell at you if you, substitute a different kind of noodle in this. Um, but with rice noodles, you generally soak them for a half an hour or so, and that just rehydrates them and loosens them up a little bit, and then you boil them for just a couple of minutes, maybe three or four. Um, best thing to do is to follow the directions that are actually on the package, uh, because they will vary a little bit depending on the particular brand but I'm gonna just let these soak. Um, as a general rule, two ounces is a serving size with any kind of pasta, and so I like to weigh it out just so that I'm not um, eating my body weight in noodles, <laughs> which can be fun, but also not also great for the waistline. So we're gonna let these soak. I'm gonna get some other ingredients that are gonna go into our toppings prepped, and we're gonna have pho for dinner. This is some of our raw beef that we have. And what I'm gonna do, you can see the grain going this way. I'm gonna cut it this way in thin slices, and then we're gonna put this on the bottom of the bowl and pour boiling pho broth over this, and that hot broth is gonna just very quickly cook this. I'm not gonna do a ton of this. I'll probably reserve some of this for another meal, and then I'll probably turn the rest of this into just stir fry meat. I like to slice this kind of thing up and put it in freezer bags with some marinade. And then when we want to have a stir fry, all I have to do is pull the bag out and everything's already marinated. And we're gonna do a mix here of both this raw beef and also some of our leftover cooked beef from when we did the bones that we pulled out after about an hour. And the, part of the idea and the beauty of pho uh, is to have kind of a mix of textures and flavors. And so there's gonna be a big difference in flavor between you know, a piece of meat like this that's getting cooked just very quickly by the broth and a piece of meat that was cooked for an hour and stewed. And I know when you are in a pho restaurant, you can often order you know, with all the meats. And so you can get it with the meatballs and the tripe and the raw thin sliced beef and the cooked beef or the brisket. So um, yeah, it's not unusual to do a little bit of everything. I'm just gonna clean these up a little bit as I go. That should be enough for two with the other meat that's gonna go in there. And the other thing we're gonna want here is some really thinly sliced um, onion. 
and I'm going to do a white onion, ignore the red onion that's here. And this could be, again, whatever kind of onion you have on hand. It doesn't have to be a yellow onion. A white onion or a red onion would also work just fine. I just, I have a, a purpose for that red onion that's sitting there, so I'm going to use a white one this tonight. And this is also going to go raw into the bottom of our bowl, and then we're going to pour boiling broth over it. And so that's going to just give it a really quick cook and add some flavor. And as you remember, you know, our broth has already got a whole lot of onion in it because we cooked it for three hours with onion. So there's already onion flavoring in there. This is just some nice fresh onion for some crunch. And then I was able to find, amazing, some Thai basil. And so um, I do have some dried and that's what I would have used in a pinch, but I've got a little bit of fresh Thai basil with that lovely anise scent. I'm not a huge fan of anise in most things, but it is really, really good in this particular dish. And then here is some of our cooked beef. So that's gonna go in there. And then I was also able to find some bean sprouts. These probably could use a rinse. I love these. The problem with them is they really don't last very long. The uh, shelf life on them is very short. Interestingly, I just watched a video from uh, Becoming a Farm Girl where she fermented some of these along with a bunch of other sprouts. And I have never seen that before, so that's certainly an interesting idea. She said they ferment very fast, so you have to ferment them for two or three days and then put them in the fridge, but that they'll hold in the fridge for two or three weeks after that and retain their crunch. So that might be worth giving a try. These are in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of wilting on them, but not bad. All right, I'll bring you back when we're ready to assemble. So you can see how much these have rehydrated. And they're no longer super stiff. And we're just gonna put them in this small bowl of boiling water for two or three minutes until they cook. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of this. bit of this. And if you've never had pho, assuming there's a few of you maybe who have never had it before, it's usually served in a bowl that's like this size, really big. Um, and so they can do, you know, a little bit of the, the meat and a whole lot of noodles and a whole lot of broth. I don't really want quite that experience. I don't need to eat my body weight in noodles and broth, although it is absolutely delicious. And so ours are gonna be a little more meat heavy, a little less broth. And unfortunately, these are the biggest bowls I've got right now. So we're just gonna make do with what we got. And you can see how those are loosening up nicely. Traditionally, you would leave these really long, but honestly, I don't love super giant long noodles and trying to like get them into my mouth. So I'm just gonna give some of these a bit of a haircut. And if you overcook these, they will very much turn to mush. So you don't wanna overdo it. I think we're about done. Not the most graceful noodle thing I've ever done in my life. I may have overcooked these just slightly. Hopefully they're fine. I wasn't sure how much these bowls were gonna hold and so I warmed up quite a bit here. Leave us a little room for toppings. 
throw in a bit of this. A bit of this. Which is one of my favorite parts. And then I'm gonna have a little bit of hoisin. You can also do a bit of chili crisp, which I might also do here. I've been kind of having a love affair with chili crisp of late. And then the other thing is a slice of lime. I just recently have seen this where instead of slicing the lime in half, you do what's called a lime cheek. And there you have it. Homemade pho, absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to tuck into this. Sorry for my very messy kitchen. It's really not difficult and it's really, really good. I think you could probably very easily just can this broth as if it were a beef stock or a chicken stock and so treat it exactly the same way if you were canning. You'd need to pressure can it, but then you could have this kind of whenever you wanted to. So, pho, give this recipe a try, you guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, leave me a comment, and share. I have new content coming out every week.